Hi, I'm Simeon Robson and this is Just The Basics. Uh, this is the fifth video in the series. Um, the last one, if you missed it, was just looking at kind of trying to find a right tone for the sort of sound that you want to achieve. Uh, in the videos before that, if you haven't seen them, we've covered uh, scales and um, tuning, sort of how to tune the bass, um, and a little bit of like finger positioning, things like that, and some warm -up exercises as well, which are very important if you haven't looked at those. Um, but this video is going to be on um, different styles of playing. So throughout the series so far, I've been using finger style playing, uh, which is the most popular style. But uh, not everyone plays finger style. Um, there's a lot of bass players out there who play slap bass. Um, people like Marcus Miller, uh, Booty Collins was one of the pioneers of it. Um, you got Victor Wooten, very famous uh, for doing it. Um, and then you've also got pick style playing, so like a guitar, play with a plectrum. Uh, that's mostly used in um, punk type bass playing. Uh, this is a punk bass actually. Uh, it's a Matt Freeman signature. Uh, he is the punk. Yeah, sorry, he's the bass player in a punk band called Rancid, um, and he's actually the reason why I started playing bass. So when I started playing, I actually used to use the plectrum, um, and then from then on, I progressed to learning more things and started with the finger style. So if you want to learn how to play with a plectrum, I'll be teaching you a bit of that in this video. Um, also just kind of touching up on the finger style as well and um, a bit of slap as well. So first things first, finger style, which we've already looked at. Um, you want to find somewhere for your thumb to rest and you want to play, um, uh, whenever you play on the E string, you want your thumb, you want your finger, uh, you want to play with your index finger and your middle finger. And you kind of just want your fingers to come back onto your thumb. So when you're playing the string, it's nice and controlled. So just very simple. And then any strings higher than that, uh, you want to kind of bring your finger back to the string just below it. So if you're playing the A string, Fingers should be coming to a stop on the E string, but not playing, just deadening on there. So, just like that. And that just like keeps it nice and controlled. Um, easier for your fingers to just get back into place to keep on playing a pattern. And then the same goes for all the strings. Comes with practice. Um, so it's just one of those things that you just need to practice a little bit. Um, and once you've got it, it just becomes really natural. Um, so that's basically the finger uh, finger playing style. Um, just try to remember that you've got both fingers to use, um, so if you're playing complicated patterns you can play faster if you're using two fingers to play it. Um, there's nothing wrong with playing just one finger though, if you can manage that as well. Um, I often find if I'm playing more simple patterns I only use my index finger. Um, but the middle finger comes in really handy if you're playing more complex things. Um, and especially if you're playing like fast single note patterns. It's that kind of thing. Um, you obviously go twice as fast if you can use two fingers. Um, so uh, that's kind of just the finger style. Um, it's also handy to know how to kind of play across the strings. Um, so if you're going to play like octaves. can kind of use if you would have your uh, index finger here and your middle finger on the uh, just on the E string sorry index finger on the E string and middle finger on the D string uh, you can put it so open note on the E obviously that's an E note and so is the second fret on the D string it's just an octave higher you can you can do that um, if that works for you or you can just use your finger you can just move your hand if you <coughs> Practicing how to just get faster with moving. 
you can just do it with one finger. Or just whatever comes naturally, if you can use both fingers. So it's just kind of up to you what you want to do, whatever feels most comfortable. Um, but it just helps to practice missing strings. So you, you're not playing on the C string at all, you're jumping straight from the E to the D string. Um, and it's just handy to know how to be able to do that. Uh, it's finger style, it's quite easy because you can use either of your fingers and you can do it any of several ways, which becomes uh, just you'll know which one feels right when you start doing it and you practice doing that. Uh, so that's finger style pretty much. Um, now, I've got a plectrum here, so I can show you pick style. Uh, so this, like I say, this is the way that I started playing the bass. Um, and Matt Freeman from Rancid uses a plectrum. Um, as I say, it's a very punk style thing to do because it's more aggressive. Uh, you get a bit of a different tone from using the plectrum. So if you were to play just an open note on the E string with your fingers, it'll sound like this. If you're playing um, with the plectrum, it's so you've got the like the noise of the plectrum itself hitting the string kind of creates a bit of a different tone as well as actually the way you're hitting the string with the plectrum. So what you want to do with the plectrum uh, is if you know how to play guitar, it's very similar to that. If not, it's simply just uh, you hold it in your hand like this, um, and you just kind of where well, you would rest your your hand just above the strings, um, you don't really want to be coming into contact with any of the strings uh, and you can't rest your thumb here because you're using it to hold the plectrum, and that's fine. So uh, you want to be holding your hand just above the strings uh, on whatever string you're playing. Um, so, and then just play, just hit the string. Uh, you can, if you're just using, sort of, if it's a slowerish pattern or you can maintain the speed, just go in one direction, you can just do that. But if it's a faster thing, or you feel like you, if it achieves a better tone or anything for you, it can go um, up strokes and then down strokes. So obviously you can play faster that way, it's kind of like using two fingers. But you hear the difference in the tone. Plectrum is slightly louder playing. So that's the way to do that. Uh, like if you're doing octaves, you just need to learn how to miss a string out in the middle, so... Sorry, missing that. So that's just kind of the way to do that. Um, it can be tricky with the plectrum to miss strings out uh, because you might hit the string on the way because um, the E string is obviously in, sorry, the A string is in between the E and the D string, so if you play that on those two, you've got to go past it, so you kind of got to raise the plectrum a bit and move it over. But pick style is a great way to start learning. Um, if you find it difficult to use your fingers, it's I found it easier at first using the plectrum. Like when I was starting out and I played with the plectrum, I found it was very easy to hit the strings. Then when I started playing with my fingers, I found it a little bit more tricky. But once I got used to it, uh, I enjoyed that a lot better. So I play with my fingers mostly now, but uh, every so often I will use the plectrum depending on uh, what I'm playing. Um, if I was going to play a rancid song, I would probably use the plectrum just to keep it more true to the style. It's a lot easier to play. Um, his bass lines are very fast, say one of the first ones I learned. Um, but there's a song called Join at the End of East Bay. Yes. So that's one, it's just kind of really natural to play on a plectrum. I can play it with the fingers as well. But it sounds a little bit better with the plectrum, uh, especially um, when you get to the part. So, that bit kind of there, uh, if you're playing with your fingers, it will be. A 
it just didn't quite have the same sort of smoothness to it. It doesn't flow quite as well. Um, so I think that's part of the reason why plectrums can be used well. Um, so if you want to use a plectrum, that's absolutely fine. Um, it would be good if you are playing punk bass. Uh, a lot of punk bass players will use a plectrum. And some other styles as well. Um, there's nothing against it. Even just normal uh, rock uh, bass players, some of them will use a plectrum. Um, and then you've got slap style, which I don't use very often. Um, I've never been able to quite sort of master the technique. I mean, I haven't tried it that often. Um, so it's not to say that I wouldn't be able to do it. But it's just um, the amount that I would actually use it. I mean, it's a really fun kind of way to do it, but I don't think I would use it often enough. Um, so that's why I kind of haven't really learned how to do it. So if you want to learn how to do slap bass, I can show you just the very basics here. And if you need to learn any more information or you want any more information, there's a lot of other people out there who are absolutely experts in slap bass. So by all means, um, if you want to go and... Um, watch some videos on how to do that or just read up on some technique. It is a lot easier to see how it's done rather than um, read about it something. But um, so I would recommend just looking up um, tutorials on YouTube, uh, kind of like what I'm doing here but maybe just more specifically for slap bass. But the general rule for slap bass is uh, you use your thumb uh, for the lower strings and then your fingers for the higher strings generally anyway, it depends sort of on what you're playing, um, but if you were to kind of do, um, if you take Flea from the Chili Peppers, he does, he does slap bass, so if you were to do higher ground, um, the pattern for that is so that's just octaves, and you Hit the hit the string with your thumb to kind of get that popping the sound out of it. You want it just underneath where the, uh, where the fretboard ends. You don't want it down here. You don't quite get the same effect. It's, you want it up here, uh, and then you kind of hold your fingers sort of a bit like this, and then they're just ready to hit the higher strings. A bit, I'll get a different setting on this, um, see if we can hear it a bit more clearly. Um. Oh, a bit too loud there. A bit too bassy that. Um, let's turn the bass off a bit actually. Check up. So slap bass usually will have quite a trebly sound to it uh, because of the way it's uh, usually done. It's kind of it's aiming for that sort of like higher tone. Um, so your lows aren't too low, your highs are nice and high. So let's try again. Like I say, I'm not very good at this, as you can tell. But um, yeah, there's no reason why you shouldn't go and learn it. I think it is really fun, and I wish I could do it properly. So I think I probably will end up learning how to do it a lot better. Um, and maybe in a year's time or so, if I've kind of studied it a lot better, I might put another video up, um, sort of just based around uh, the slap bass technique. But the general technique is just like I say, you want your thumb just under the fretboard, and you just kind of you just hit the string and pop off straight away. You've got to put emphasis on pulling away as well as hitting the string. Um, if you just hit the string, it just deadens it. So you've got to pull off as well. And you want that kind of like nice sound that's got there. Pardon me. So, and then you, you just pull it off with your fingers as well in, in a kind of more sort of aggressive manner. If you're just playing with your fingers, you've just got that tone. But if you're pulling off, you've got that kind of extra little bit. So there it is, that's, um, that's a bit of slap bass, very bad slap bass, but um, at least you've got the basics and if you want to kind of go on to doing something like that, then by all means, have a look at some people out there who are very good at it. Um, so 
that concludes today's lesson. Hope you've enjoyed everything that I've shown you so far. Um, next lesson, it'll be looking at um, playing along with backing track. So I've made some backing tracks myself. And um, I'll put those up on YouTube as well. Um, so if you want to kind of like download those or just listen to those and play along with those, it's really handy to have a backing track to play along to. Uh, because bass is an instrument that's meant to be played really as a part of an ensemble, not just by itself. There's a lot of play there's a lot of bass players out there who can make uh, fantastic things out of just playing bass by themselves. Um, but those are kind of like the top level sort of people. And if you want to be playing as a uh, bass player, you're ideally wanting to be kind of like part of the rhythm section in the band. So you and the drummer kind of got to keep the whole thing going. So we'll look at that in the next one if you're interested. Uh, and like I say, I'll put the backing tracks up as well for you to play along to. Um, so, see you next time. Thanks very much.